what, what's what's the biggest what's the uh, most noticeable thing that stands out on their success for you is it the man you yeah, just mentioned the, yeah rick bonus uh, being able to get the buy-in especially structurally defensively obviously they have one of the best goalies in the league in connor hellebuck but you know, but as Mike Kelly said, they're not bleeding chances the way they did last year. The high danger chances, the great A's were uh, off the charts last year. This was a team that was very good offensively, but uh, didn't care particularly much when they didn't have the puck. At least that's what it seemed like to the outside. Um, obviously, we've known they've had offensively gifted players for a long time. But uh, Connor Hellbuck playing at an elite level, but you know, this is a team that's commit more committed defensively. Uh, their special teams have improved dramatically, and they got a top five penalty kill. And even though their their power play was hindered by the fact that they had seven guys out of the lineup, but I mean, this is a team that that is much more committed without the puck. And Rick Bonus has just done a fabulous job of you know demanding accountability. And uh, Nikki, you played on some teams. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you're ready to really be coached. And I think maybe that's what the not, the Jets weren't rock bottom in terms of being you know 30th or 32nd, but. Uh, they had some lofty expectations that weren't met, and I think they were a little bit more open to the suggestions that Rick Bonus had when he arrived on the scene here. That's actually a natural transition to what I wanted to ask you about, which was Blake Wheeler and what his relationship is like with the team and his role on the team as someone who is stripped of the captaincy to start the season. It felt like there may be some conflict there, you know, the big contract. Where are things at now with Wheeler and the team? Yeah, Justin, I mean, Blake really handled this like a professional. Obviously, it would have been a big blow. I mean, this is a guy who took enormous pride in being the captain. I mean, he was one of the first Jets to buy a home in the community. I mean, he's been here all 12 seasons, uh, took enormous pride in wearing that C. But I think he's the kind of guy who put a little bit too much at times on his own shoulders. Uh, And I think that one of the things Rick found in terms of his conversations with other players is that they wanted to have a little bit more of a communal approach to the leadership. Uh, and you know, having three alternates rather than one captain who had a very strong voice, I think, has really helped. Uh, Blake, obviously, when he showed up on the scene, he said, you know, if you think I'm just going to shrink into the background, you're sadly mistaken. And uh, he's backed that up not only with words and leadership, but also in terms of his play on ice. I mean, prior to his gruesome injury, he was producing at nearly a point of game rate. And, um, you know, and he's a guy who's provided you know offense for a long time for this team. But I think his leadership is has been really impressive this year on a team that has a bunch of young emerging guys who wanted to have a, lot, a stronger voice and those guys have done their part as well but uh, you know Blake Wheeler has done a nice job of handling what could have been an uncomfortable situation and I mean the other part too Blake was very open about it before training camp when the announcement was made both sides uh, you know were open to a possible you know breakup in the offseason that didn't transpire and you know that didn't filter slip into his play either. I mean, he's a guy who's been very motivated and has done a really nice job on a number of levels. And it's allowed him, I feel like there's been a weight lifted from his shoulders a little bit. It just allowed him to go out and play hockey rather than worry about some of the other things. And, you know, as a 35 year old now, you know, do I have to, you know, know, worry about things other than playing? I think he's just going out and playing and uh, he's always been more of a lead by example kind of guy also. And, you know, kudos to him for being able to handle handle that uh, you know in a professional manner and and you know, be able to play at the level he has Ken as far as the decision uh, on the captaincy and overall how uh, you know a guy like Rick bonus can uh, uh, allocate uh, and empower people around him it just there's it seems to be such a, a vast difference of maybe uh, well first of all coaching style between uh, Paul Maurice and what uh, the players have been used to and, and now Rick bonus. And uh, no question that Paul Maurice had a, a law, all-in buy-in on on Blake Wheeler and and what he meant to the team and how he gave him uh, a chance to take control of that dressing room. And now Bonus comes in and kind of spreads it out. And even the sense that I get, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but you know when it comes to Rick Bonus, uh, you mentioned the accountability, and he's certainly there to either kick you in the ass or maybe pat you on the back, but. A lot of that stuff that uh, is around the team maybe fall into the lap of Brad Lauer, uh, Scott Arneal, who was a head coach. I mean, they're probably doing more coaching X's and O's than than bonus, and bonus can just focus on, you know, the the smaller details on on maybe what what ticks for some guys. Yeah, I love the, that you use the word empower, Kipper. I mean, I think that's really something that's been very important. 
like you said, I mean, the star players always felt empowered in the Paul Maurice era. I think that sometimes the players, the complimentary players, maybe didn't always feel as big a part of it. Uh, that sort of not only holds the leadership, but ice time and responsibilities. So uh, I think that Rick's, Rick's ability to get accountability, and I, and I don't think that don't think for a second that Paul Maurice didn't want <laughs> didn't want these guys to play better defensively. But uh, Rick's ability to provide a bit of a you know a striking critique, but doing it in a bit more of a caring manner, uh, I think is something that you know from talking to players is something that really has hit home with them. Uh, Rick can be very you know very cut and dried. He says he he hates gray areas. That's one of the things Rick said for on the first day of training camp. So, but at the same time, he's not, you know, he's, he's doing it from a position of the, the players know that they care, that he cares about them, uh, that he only wants the best for them. And I think that's, that's what's allowed them to want to be coached, to use a phrase Mark Shifley has used. I mean, he said he wanted to be pushed and he wanted to be coached and, and he's playing that way. I mean, Mike mentioned only, you know, now he has, now he has 11 assists after having a couple the other night, but Mark's play has been at a really high level. I mean, this is, would be the first time in seven seasons he hasn't played at a point of a game rate. But a lot of people would make the argument Mark Scheip is playing some of his best hockey. I mean, he's on pace for 46, you know, 46 to 49 goals. Um, you know, and the assist is not not a matter of not setting up guys. It's been a matter of not converting. And a lot of those right. top six guys, like Nikolai Ehlers, has only played, you know, four games this season. So I think that's impacted his numbers to a degree also, especially on the power play. But, yeah, I mean, it's 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 been impressive to see how the team has rallied around him. Uh, you know, now they had a little bit of a rough patch in December where they had 16 games in 30 days and they, they were missing a lot of key components, but they got through that three game losing skid and have won five in a row. And, you know, I'm with Mike. I mean, this is a team that it's not smoke and mirrors. It's not a team that, you know, analytically should crumble down the stretch. I mean, they should be getting better. I mean, they're getting healthier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think they probably, their best should be around the corner. And I mean, as Rick Bonus has said, Structurally, they've improved, but they're not at a you know Stanley Cup level yet. But they feel like they can grow into that during the second half of the season. 